Hey friends, Anastasia here and let me tell you something. Content writing is the most time-consuming part of running a website. Today I'll show you how to write SEO-optimized content using the power of AI. If we ensure that we are diligent in fact-checking the information generated by AI tools and use our own expertise on the topic, the content created with the help of AI should do well on Google. So step number one is to choose the right topic for the post. Let me tell you something important about writing the perfect blog post. Your first and very important step is to choose the best topic to write about. We can start by using the prompt feature in AnyWord. It's an AI content writing and performance analytics tool that kindly sponsor today's video. And you will see how quickly we can go from a keyword to a blog title and to the outline of the entire post. So here is what happens that we just give a prompt asking to suggest some topics for an article about starting an online business. We will get a list of 10 different topics that we could start working on. It gives us a very wide range of article ideas. They all make sense and it's great to keep them for our content plan. But I think that we need to do a deeper search to pick the right topic. After all, why waste your time and energy writing something that won't get any traffic, right? And the trick is to find topics that are related to your niche, that have a decent search volume and that you actually have a chance of ranking for them on Google. You're lucky today because I will show you a way to do this for free. Let's say that you want to write about different ways to make money online. So we will go to Wordstream's free keyword research tool and just type in a keyword how to start an online business. Now, a few short steps later, you will find yourself on this page and you will need now to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click download keywords to get a list of keywords in an Excel file. Now you can sort them by competition index. The lower is the better. But we also want something with a decent search volume at the same time. So check this out. I found a good one, a keyword how to start an online clothing store. The competition score for it is only 26 and there are 1300 searches per month for this keyword. Not bad, right? Step number two, craft the perfect article title. Let me tell you about creating a catchy title for an article. Like imagine you're writing about the keyword that we're using today as an example, how to start an online clothing store, right? So your title needs to do two things. First, make sure that you've got the keyword in the title near the beginning, if possible, so Google knows what's up and sends you traffic. Second, you gotta make sure that people want to read it. So throw in some dates to show it's fresh or maybe use a number to make it a listicle because people love listicles. And actually, on this step, we might want to engage an AI tool that would help us generate really clickbaity titles and not just one title, but maybe several ideas that we can choose from. And we will open the blog wizard tool in AnyWord. By the way, you can start using AnyWord for free today with a seven day free trial and no credit card required. Paid subscriptions start at only $24 per month and my followers can get an extra 20% off all plans on any word using the code ANASTASIA20. Just click the first link in the description box below. So we first need to give here a description of the article and it's the step where we need to use your expertise on the topic to make a meaningful brief for the AI tool. After doing this research for our keyword how to start an online clothing store, I came up with this short description to feed any word. This article will cover the essential steps to launch your dream online clothing store. In this post, we will guide you through choosing a niche, finding suppliers, creating an inciting website and promoting your brand. Here we will just need to insert our main keyword, but also ideally we should suggest one or a couple of related keywords that you can think of. I will add this one, for example, how to start a small clothing business from home, because it has a higher search volume and not too high a competition level. And right on the next step, we will ask AnyWord to give us a bunch of SEO optimized and click worthy titles for this post. Here are some ideas it suggested for us. By the way, 
any word has a unique feature that shows us predictive scoring between 0 and 100 that can predict how well this content will convert or engage with the audience. I like this one, for example, how to start an online clothing store in 8 steps, but I also liked in the second option there was the word easy, so I will choose my own title and will add this word easy to it. Step number 3 understand the search intent to make the right outline. If you Google how to start an online clothing store, you will see that the search intent is informational. The top articles are providing guidelines and steps for starting this kind of business, not trying to sell you anything. Even though some websites that rank high here belong to e-commerce platforms, the articles that rank on their sites are not selling you their software directly. They give you a ton of information on the topic and maybe somewhere in the middle of the article they will mention their own product. So you will want to structure your content in a similar way. I recommend you to check your top ranking competitors, open in Google top 10 maybe 3 or 4 pages and quickly look through them. Try to scan the content. You don't need to read the entire article. What you want to understand here is how the top articles are structured, so that you can make a superset outline that includes all the important topics. Pay attention to the subheadings your competitors used. How many H2 or H3 headings they have on average? Do they have many images on the page or just a few of them? And so on. Then you can add an FAQ section with questions like How do you set up an online clothing store? Or How do I start a boutique from home? How do I start a clothing line with no sewing experience? You can find these questions for free in the People Also Asked section on Google. And if you find what I shared so far helpful, give me a like, it really motivates me to work more on this channel. Subscribe and hit the bell button to get more of my videos in your feed. Now, step number four, generate the actual outline. Now that you've got a title, on the next step, any word can suggest you the whole article outline. So you see, these sections seem to be based mostly on the description that I gave for this article at the beginning, but the tools definitely added several additional sections which I didn't even think about. The next step is to ask any word to create an introductory paragraph. Again, we get here several options to choose from and they also have a score. After reading all the options, I actually agree with the highest score that any word suggested, so I will pick the first option. Now, step number five, generate the text. Now, on the next step, we will again need to use our expertise on the topic because the tool gave us the outline, but we should now come up with some ideas and start writing the text and then the AI tool will pick up and finish the paragraphs for us. In this small window on the right side, we can give some ideas or a direction that we want any word to take for the section of the article. So I will give you some instructions like this. Maybe you notice that I asked the AI tool to write text in simple language. You don't want to use language that's too fancy or technical. Aim for a middle school reading level to make sure that your content is accessible to everyone. Now, any word will generate the text. The tool gives us much longer text based on the short prompts that I entered. And we just need to add some spaces to separate the paragraphs here. Once we're done with this one, we can do the same for each section of the article. So one cool thing about having an outline is that it gives you a roadmap for your writing. It's kind of like when you're going on a road trip and you have a map to follow. With an outline, you know where you're starting and where you're going, so it's easier to fill in all the details in between. All you have to do is answer the questions related to each section heading, and then use the AI content writer to extend your ideas. This way, instead of spending 5 hours on each blog post, you can write it in an hour or two, depending on the keyword difficulty and the text volume that you need to rank for it. Any word also has this interesting feature that helps you get some ideas of what you can talk about in each section. So we have this section about taking amazing product photos. What you can do is search for this keyword on Google and check some articles that rank high to see which ones are really helpful. 
Now just copy the page URL of this article, go back to any word and click on this button to use a web page as a reference. What the tool does here, it takes the best ideas from the referenced page and creates the talking points for your entire section. If these instructions look good to you, click Generate to get the full text for this section. Now, step number six – optimize the article for SEO. While you're adding more text to the post in any word, the tool will always keep showing you on the left side the keywords that you added initially and will show you how many times they were mentioned in the AI-generated text. So far, my main focus keyword was mentioned twice in the first paragraph and one time in the title of the article. So you can click on any keyword and see all the mentions of it highlighted in the text. If you want to move this step to another level, then make sure that your writing is properly optimized for search engines. It might sound complicated, but it's actually pretty straightforward. All you have to do is take your AI-generated text and run it through an SEO optimization tool. I have used RankIQ and Surfer SEO Content Editor for this. You will find links to all the tools that I mentioned today in the description below. Basically, what these tools do is that they, they analyze the articles that are already ranking on page one of Google for the same topic as your article. So the tools look at the things like the words, the entities and the phrases that those articles are using, and then the tools help you guide your writing so that you can use the same elements in your text as well. So this way your article is much more likely to show up on the first page of search results, which is exactly where you want to be. Now, step 7 – check for plagiarism. What Google really doesn't accept is plagiarism and duplicate content. Since large parts of your text were generated by AI, you probably want to make sure that this text doesn't have any plagiarism issues. So you can do it very easily inside any word. Just select the text that you want to check, click on this button to check the plagiarism and get the results right here. No need to use any external tools for this. And if you're still concerned about how Google will perceive content that has been generated by AI, then you should know that according to Google's latest update in their guidelines, it will rank AI-generated content if it's of a high quality and has been reviewed and edited by experts on the topic. Google talks in the new guidance about EEAT algorithm, evaluating your content in this way, whether you're using AI-generated content or not, will help you stay on course with what your systems seek to reward. Step number eight, proofread. It's time to make sure everything is looking nice and polished. Any word has integrated Grammarly into its interface, so you don't need to copy your content to a third-party tool. While the content is being generated, AI will also spell-check it, which will help you catch any pesky typos or errors that might slip through the cracks. While grammar might not be among the main ranking factors on Google, you definitely don't want your readers to be distracted by silly mistakes. And just to be safe, it's always a good idea to get a second opinion. That's where your grammar police friend comes in. You know, the one, the person who is always correcting everyone's grammar and spelling. You could ask them to proofread your content and give you their honest feedback. Of course, this is just optional, but it never hurts to get another set of eyes on your work. Step number nine, improve the readability of the article. So when you're all set to upload your article to your site, it's really important to make sure that it's easy to read. And that's not just about making search engines happy. It's about making your readers happy too. So I've got some tips and tricks for you to help make your article super readable. First things first, you want to break up those big chunks of text into smaller paragraphs that are easy on the eyes. Nobody wants to read a giant wall of text, trust me, it's a turnoff. It's especially hard on a mobile device. Instead, try to keep your paragraphs short and sweet. And don't forget to add some eye candy too. Images, graphics and videos can help break up the text and keep your readers engaged. When it comes to headlines, you want to make sure that they're the right size to anchor the eye as your readers scroll down the page. 
And when it comes to the length of your article, don't worry too much about hitting a certain word count. Instead, focus on providing value to your readers and following the patterns that you see on page one of Google. All right, I know you're excited to get your perfect blog post up on your site, but take a deep breath and give it one last read through to make sure that everything is just right. So step number 10 is adding links. Adding links to your article can make a big difference in how well it ranks in search engine results. Here are the two types of links that you might want to consider including in your article. First is called internal links. These are the links that point to other pages on your website. And by including internal links in your article, you're giving readers more opportunities to explore your site and stay engaged. From an SEO perspective, internal links can also help search engines better understand the structure of your site and the relationship between different pages. Also, I recommend you to try to add at least two or three inbound internal links from other pages to your new article. And the second type is called external links. These are the links that point to other websites on the web. While it might seem counterintuitive to link to other sites, external links can actually help your SEO. When you link to high-quality, authoritative sites, it shows search engines that your content is valuable and relevant. Just be sure to only link to sites that are trustworthy and relevant to your topic. All these steps should help you rank your articles on Google, but it's hard for new websites because of the so-called sandbox that keeps your site away from the top search results for at least six months and in some niches even for a year. So what can you do in the meantime to get some free traffic to your site? Personally, I have reached my first $1,000 a month income report thanks to free traffic from Pinterest. If you want to learn how to get free traffic from Pinterest, check that video up there and I'll see you in the next one.